Today, we're gonna to talk about the craftsmanship behind a well-built cabinet. I'm coming to you from my cabinet maker shop here in South Austin. We're at Honey Woodworks, and I wanna tell you some things today that will help you in discerning what's an average cabinet and what's an extraordinary cabinet. First, let's talk about casework. If you look at this display back here, the casework is really the meat or the structure of the cabinet. We really wanna look for a veneer core plywood for that case. Have you ever seen a cabinet that blew up because of a water leak? That was not a veneer core cabinet. That was probably a melanine or a particle board cabinet, and I'm not a fan of those. We wanna to try to avoid those. The next thing that I think separates a really well-built cabinet is the drawer construction. I use mostly plywood drawers with a lock shoulder, but another great option is to go to a hardwood drawer with dovetails like this one right here. You wanna try and avoid butt joints and melanine drawers. The next thing on my list is hardware. This basic hardware right here, this is an AccuRide side mount ball bearing slide, and they still work great. This is a really good baseline for me. A nice upgrade, however, and one that I use on most of my houses, is this drawer right here. This is an undermount drawer slide, so we get a little bit wider of a box. It also has a soft close feature, so those drawers don't slam shut. The next thing I wanna talk about is install. This is one that really separates my houses from some of my competitors. This cabinet right here, well-crafted, but installed pretty traditionally. If you look at where the cabinet meets the floor, we've got a shoe mold to hide that joint. And where the cabinet hits a wall, we've got another molding there. This is often called a scribe mold or a screen mold. So this cabinet, when it's put in place, needs something to hide those joints. What if you didn't want those moldings? The way to do that is to build the cabinet box a little bit bigger, especially where it hits the wall, and then you use a compass and scribe that cabinet to the wall so that that cabinet actually fits like a hand and a glove, just perfectly in place. When you do that, you don't need any additional moldings. Same goes with the end panel on this cabinet. It's been made a little bit long, and then the cabinet installer, when he's on site, is scribing it to the floor. That way we've got a perfect fit. Your architect's really gonna like that option. And the last thing I wanna talk about is shop finishes. I'm a big fan of getting these cabinets finished at the cabinet maker shop and delivered to my site, totally done. In the years past when I've used the painter to paint cabinets, we got a good finish, but we didn't get a fantastic finish, and it just doesn't hold up long term. So check out a cabinet shop that can pre-finish those cabinets for you, protect them really well once they get installed, and then you're gonna have really a top of the line, extraordinary cabinet. Hey, if you want more tips on cabinets or anything else related to your build or remodel, visit my blog at mattreisinger.com. Otherwise, I'd love to have you follow me on Instagram or Twitter. We'll see you next time.